thank you all for staying, everybody who hasn't gone home. Um, I appreciate it's late. So I'm going to just kind of give you seven really snappy tips to help you feel a bit less like social media is really dominating your life. Because I think nowadays we all can kind of feel a bit like, oh, we've got to be doing this and we've got to be doing this and we've got to be doing X, Y, and Z. And if we're not checking our phones and posting a story and doing something every five minutes, then it's all going to go to shit, which it isn't. So these, you're going to follow these tips and you'll barely have to do anything and it will all be fine. So just, I'm crackling, is that okay? Okay, maybe it's my actual voice. Um, just in case you don't know who I am, uh, I write a blog, it's called Slummy Single Mummy. Uh, I've been writing it since 2009, which I think means I've been writing it for three decades. Yeah, definitely going to say that. Um, <laughs> it started off as a parenting blog when my children were younger, and then as they got older and less keen on me sharing embarrassing stories about them, it's evolved into more of a kind of lifestyle, vaginal inconveniences type of um, blog. <laughs> uh, also do food and travel. Um, <laughs> These are a few of the brands that I work with. So my blog is my full-time job, and I make money by working with brands who want to reach audiences who perhaps they wouldn't be able to reach in a kind of authentic, natural way normally. So um, they get in touch with me, and I make jokes about them, and they pay me. It works out really well for me. don't know how well it works out for them. Um, part of running a blog, obviously, is that I have to have a social media presence. And so this is me on, on Twitter. I'm Mummy Blogger on Twitter. If anyone wants to follow me or tweet me or um, it's just a selection of my, of my latest tweets. Um, so I kind of made a decision fairly early on that I was going to pick a social media platform and kind of do that one really well. So I picked Twitter because no one else wanted it. Um, and so I've spent quite a lot of time over the last 10 years building up a Twitter following and being like the parent blogger with the big Twitter following. Um, it's, it's my thing. Um, then I realized that all the cool kids are on Instagram, so I had to do that instead. Um, yeah. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay. I've got a thing in each hand um, <laughs> So, So, yeah, then I, then I had to do Instagram because apparently that's what everyone does now. Um, I use Instagram for uh, doing things like posting pictures of baby Jerry. This is my grandson. Just to leave you a minute, just to think about that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I really love Instagram stories for posting pictures of my cats. These are my three cats. They're all named after fictional detectives. Um, you can't see Endeavour very clearly in here, but he's there on top of the shed. Just keeping an eye out. And I, and I did a chart. I thought charts chart might be good for a digital taunton. So this is... <laughs> It's a representation of how I spend my time. This is in bed with the cats. No, this is uh, my <laughs> social media channel. So as you can see, Twitter is where I kind of do my business. And uh, Instagram, Facebook, and some others. Kind of boring. Um, so that's a bit about me, just so you know who I am. And the talk now. So how do you stop letting social media rule your life? These are my seven top tips. Switching hands. So number one, stop doing as much. It's kind of simple, isn't it? But I, just, I did a little... Uh, do you know in like 2002 when everyone was doing those word chart things? I did one of those to represent my life. Um, <laughs> just to, <laughs> so here's social media. So you can see it's quite small. Um, I think there's a bit of a myth that in order to be successful on social media, you have to be doing everything and posting every five minutes, and you really, really don't. You can tone it right back. Um, 
and because of this whole like 80 20 thing which um i'm sure you all know um, but basically you spend five days a week doing stuff and only 20 percent of the stuff you ever do is actually interesting or valuable or creates any kind of results so if you can figure out what that 20 percent is you only have to work a day a week and then you still get all that blue um <laughs> That's my business model. <laughs> it's quite simple. That's tip number one. Do less. Uh, tip number two. <clears throat> when you do post, make it relatable and authentic. And this is kind of one of those like cheesy things that everyone says, oh, we'll be authentic on social media. Um, but, you know, it, people say it like that because it's true. So before you post anything, just kind of think to yourself, like, is it actually interesting? Does it entertain people or does it inform people? Those are kind of the two things that I try to think about. Um, and also, don't be afraid to be a little bit vulnerable with stuff. Um, and I think this applies even if you're a business, like you can still have a kind of behind the scenes, we cocked up doing this, but here's how we put it right um, type of content because people, connect to people when they sense a vulnerability or when they see something that's human about you. And so I think the more you can incorporate that into your social media, the more you can kind of form those connections. So I'm kind of thinking less about that sort of perfect tweet that has two hashtags and a link and a picture and tags 10 people and has a location and more just about kind of stuff that talks about who you are or who, who your business is and what that represents and how you can connect with people um, through that. So here's, here's my most popular tweet in January. Uh, I'll read it out to you because it's really good. Um, <laughs> does anyone else really hate putting in petrol? Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's awful, isn't it? So I've been driving around with the light on for ages, putting it off because it's so tedious. There are no hashtags on that or links or pictures or anything. But apparently, like everyone else in the world, also hates putting in petrol, which makes me wonder why no one has come up with some kind of system that's, like, that's an alternative to putting in petrol. Oh, yeah, somebody has. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, you have to plug them in. You have to plug them in, don't you? I think that would be the same. <laughs> or you'd wake up in the middle of the night and you'd be like, oh, I forgot to put the car on charge. So... Um, that was my most popular tweet in January. It had over 20,000 impressions, and loads of people liked it and replied, and they were all like, God, yeah, that's where I've got a husband. <laughs> yeah. I know. Do you know, like, I've never had a husband, but my dream husband fills the car up with petrol for me. <laughs> Employ a husband. Oh, okay. I see. Just like a transactional. Brilliant. Cookies, it is. Um, here's another example. So this is the day that I discovered that the smell of pseudocrem is lavender. Fun fact for you. Pseudocrem has a very particular smell, and I had never realized before that it's lavender. And then when you start to think about it, it's obvious, because the writing is lavender colored. The ingredients say lavender. It's kind of a giveaway. And everyone was all over that. They were like, mind blown. Um, that is relatable content for parents. And then at Christmas, I made these, which are mince pies using a special cat cutter. So they were also very popular. Um, so you're thinking about your target audience and you're thinking about the kind of stuff that they're going to relate to and enjoy. I can't remember whether this is point three or part of point two, so we'll count them up at the end and then we'll know. But this is a new point, or possibly not. Maybe two and a half. So as well as thinking about what you actually say, uh, it's good to think about your aesthetic. So this is just kind of like how you look and the images that you use and how consistent they are and what they say about you. And I think you can tell like a lot about a brand from kind of like just the really simple how they look. So I've got a couple of Instagram examples for you. So this is a local photographer. I mean, you can see, can't you? They're like, all her pictures look the same. She's like this lovely, calm, pure. I mean, she's so lovely and 
she's just like, <laughs> she floats. <laughs> yeah, she's really young and full of energy. Um, uh, this is a blogger that I follow uh, in Bristol called Tiger Lily Quinn, and her thing is all about family life. So she's really colourful, she's bold, she's, she's got like lots going on, and she's trying to kind of show this sort of fun family life. So you can see that even without the captions, you've already got like an idea of how these people are different and what, what they're about. And you can do this really simply on Instagram or on, on any platform. So one of the easiest ways to do it in Instagram is just to use the Instagram editing tools. Now, lots of you have probably used like the filters, like Valencia 2009. Um, everyone did that, didn't they? Or like the photo frames around. But um, if you go into the edit tab instead of filter, you can ch adjust all kinds of things like brightness, contrast, sharpening, all sorts. Like you can get really good quality editing just within Instagram. Um, there's also a really good app you can use called VSCO, um, which does kind of similar editing things, but which also has loads and loads of presets that you can apply to your images. So if you've got like a particular feel that you want to go for, like, um, you know, like brightly colored or high contrast, you can apply the same preset um, set of editing to any photo. Um, and this is just kind of a, a useful link, might be... Um, it's an app called Later, and they do like a whole training thing on how to create your Instagram aesthetic. So if that floats your boat, get over there. Oh, this is like um, a really good example. This is a guy called Matt Inwood, and he's a food photographer. He takes all of these photos on his iPhone, and he edits them all in Instagram, and that is all he does. Like all of these photos are just iPhone Instagram photos. He's ace. He does workshops, if you want to go on them. I made my photos look like that for like a whole day afterwards. <laughs> no, no, it wore off. Okay. Possibly point three or point four. Um, Twitter lists. Does anybody in here use Twitter lists? Oh, guys, guys, come on. Twitter is like one of the most basic social media tools, but it, I cannot emphasize enough what a difference Twitter lists have made to my life. They're so easy to set up. So you just go into your little menu at the side, lists. Um, there's a button up there somewhere off the screen. It's like create a new list. You can add people to it. You can call them like insulting names and make it private, like people I hate. Um, just make got the padlock thing. <laughs> You can, um, if you're too lazy to set up your own list, you can subscribe to other people's lists. So if other people, somebody else has set up like Somerset businesses, you can find that and you can subscribe to it. Um, and it just makes Twitter so much more manageable. So instead of going onto Twitter and having your home feed, which is just like speed of light refreshing with tweets about Brexit and it's like, no, it's overwhelming. You can... You can either use Twitter to go in directly and look at your list, or you can use something like um, TweetDeck. This is TweetDeck. Uh, it's completely free to use. It's all like linked up to Twitter. And you can arrange your lists in columns. So um, I have a column for my notifications. I have a column for what I call my home feed, but it's actually just the people I really like. Um, so if you're on that, then you're really special. No one here is. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You all are. Um, <laughs> there's a Somerset column. I especially put in a hashtag digital Taunton column to make it look like I was, you know. Um, <laughs> anything you want, you can make as a column. And what that means is when you've got 10 minutes, rather than going into Twitter and being totally overwhelmed by information, you can think, okay, what I really need to do is engage with local businesses in my area, you know, like Taunton Independent Quarter. I want to spend 10 minutes um, retweeting stuff from them. I want to reply to conversations that they're having. And you can be really, really focused and feel like you've got 10 minutes of really useful work out of Twitter. Honestly. Yeah, I use this on the desktop. But you could easily set up the lists on your phone and then just go into lists and pick a list. 
Um, it just it saves so much time, and it's I, I cannot stress enough how much you will love lists when you have all gone home immediately after this and made at least 10. <coughs> you got lists. Well done. We'll do it now. OK, the next one, totally lost count now, um, is images. So images are incredibly important, obviously, on social media. We all know this. I found some stats to back it up. Have a read through if you want. The, the bottom one, I think, is the most interesting. But essentially, the more you use images, <laughs> they're, they're all on the internet. I don't know why you're laughing. Um, yeah. The more you use images, the more engagement you're going to get. Just cut, you know, you, you can add numbers to it, you can do whatever you like. But we all know if we're scrolling through Twitter or we're looking through Facebook and something has an image attached to it, it's going to grab our attention more than something that doesn't. Um, if you're worried about not being able to take your own photos, then there's no excuse because there's loads of like really good free photo sites. This is one of my favorites that I use for blog posts. It's called Unsplash. Um, did a quick search there for coffee and for cats. I mean, just random. Um, and as you can see, they're really high quality images. Um, you can use them without any credit. So you could even put them on Instagram, pretend you took them yourself if you want to. <coughs> so that's a really good site. Definitely recommend that one. Um, the other site that I use a lot for creating images and graphics is called Canva. Again, it's another free tool. Um, one of the really good things about Canva is that it ca it has a loads of like preset templates. So, if you want to create an image for Twitter, it's got all the right dimensions. Or if you want an Instagram post or whatever it is you want, um, you can have it there, like ready in the right shape. Um, I use it for creating all sorts of things. So. I might take some like food photos and add text to make them Pinterestable. <laughs> it's definitely a word. Um, creating any kind of images for my blog. This is an interesting image I made for a post about I call Tinder Bingo. I uh, don't know if anyone ever goes on Tinder, but these are some of the things that um, I like to tick off. Uh, that are photos that um, men often have. So classic gym selfie featuring heavy looking weights, embracing a large fish, that kind of thing. <laughs> so it's what all the men on Tinder do. So that is isn't definitely another tool that I recommend if you want to create your own images or graphics for things called Canva. Uh, right, next point. Uh, is to plan and schedule all of your content in one go. So rather than panicking every day that you have to do another Instagram post or, oh God, I haven't tweeted in eight hours. I've got to do something about it. It might be that it's much more practical and much more efficient for your business to have two hours or three hours or half a day or whatever it might be a week where you say, right, I'm going to schedule everything, I'm going to get it all done, then I don't have to think about it all week. And there are a lot of tools that you can do this with. So I've just picked one that I think is particularly good and also has a free version. Um, so you can have a play back with it and then if it doesn't suit you, you've not lost anything. And it's called uh, Later. Um, I think it might have started off just as Instagram, but you can now link up lots of different accounts. So you can have Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Probably more, I don't know. Um, you can upload all of your images, so you have a media library with all of your cats, just all in one place. And, and then you basically, you can just drag and drop um, your images into different slots in your calendar for all the different platforms. Uh, you can add captions, you can add your hashtags. You can save captions if you want to. So if you're on Instagram and you have like a set of 20 hashtags that you always use for a particular, you know, for food photos and another 20 that you use for something else, you can save them and then just add them to your captions really easily. And then if you have a um, business Instagram account, 
you can set up the time and it will just post it automatically for you and you literally have to do nothing else. If you have a personal account, it won't automatically post it, but it, you can set it up to send you a reminder. So it's kind of there ready to go and you just get a little thing and you post it. So it's really good. Um, it also gives you some analytics. So it will give you like a, a color coding. I don't know. Um, and kind of give you like a summary of your latest posts and how many likes and how many comments so th you can see them easily. Um, oh, and also in the calendar view, you can also go into like a preview of Instagram where you, it get, comes up looking like your phone and you can drag your photos into your phone and see how they look in the grid so you can make sure you've got like a good color balance and um, yeah, it's really good. So the basic package of this is free, where you get like one social channel, one of each social channel, and then the upgrades are actually really reasonable, and you get quite a lot with the free version. So it's definitely worth having a play about with and getting everything done in one go. So following on from that, um, another tip is to make good use of the analytics and there are, each of the social media platforms has like inbuilt analytics that are actually really useful so um, as you could use something like later and look at their analytics but Instagram also has its own analytics um, Twitter analytics does like loads of cool stuff which shows you so th there's my petrol tweet which was my top tweet for January tells you like who all the cool people who are following you like tweet impressions like everything gives you loads of information. It will tell you which of your tweets have been most popular. This is impressions and then engagements and engagement rates. Um, and then most of the channels, this one's Facebook, most of the channels will tell you also about your audience. So as you can see, my target audience is me. Uh, women 35 to 44. That is me. Also men in Nigeria. <laughs> I'm really popular with men in Nigeria. <laughs> I once had a message from a guy in Nigeria saying, I've showed your photo to my son, and he agrees that you would make a good mother. <laughs> <laughs> but what's really good about looking at your analytics is it helps you to focus in on who exactly you're talking to. And uh, what you'll often find is that the people you're talking to will vary by platform. So on Facebook, my um, men to women ratio is very different than it would be on Twitter. So I've got a lot of women on Facebook, fewer women on Twitter, um, and so you can kind of target content accordingly if you're smart, if you're not doing my point one. Um, and, that, and the analytic stuff comes back then to this 80 20 rule. So if you know what content is working well for you, just do more of that. And then you look at the stuff that did really badly, do less of that. I'm so, such an expert. <laughs> <coughs> okay, my final point before you all go home to bed is to experiment with new things if you want to, but don't feel bad if you don't. And there's always like something that is the next best thing on social media. So there was like a few years ago, all of the parent bloggers suddenly were on Snapchat. Um, and I said to my oldest daughter, like, should I be on Snapchat? And she said, no, it's just middle-aged women think that they're cool. They're going on Snapchat, like, don't bother. And lo and behold, like a month later, none of the bloggers were on Snapchat. So it's good to have a play around with things if you want to, but don't feel like you have to. If you've got one platform or two platforms that work really well for you, that's fine. Um, if you do want to play around with stuff, I definitely recommend Instagram stories, just because they're so easy to use, and the engagement that you get on stories is, like in my experience, is, is higher than any other platform. They're really simple to use, so you can take a simple picture of your favorite cat. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't tell the other cats. <laughs> <laughs> you can add things to it, like polls. You can add hashtags. You can add little gifts. You can do countdowns, quizzes, music, all sorts of things. 
If you don't want to start with a photo, you can do boomerangs, which is like, you know, cheers, do a little glass, chink. Um, you can do zoom in on things. You can just add text. You, there's loads and loads of um, different options for stories. If you want to take your stories a little bit to the next level, there's an app called In Stories, um, which is really fun. If you want to go and look at me on Instagram, which is Slummy Single Mummy, I did a few stories with this app this afternoon just to give you an idea of the variety. So the, my last three stories are all made using this app, like in literally 10 seconds each. I mean, it's not difficult, but they look kind of fun and different to the normal kind of Instagram story, so that's really fun to play around with. Um, that one is paid for. Can't remember how much it is, but it's not very much. You can always get a free trial, and you'll probably be bored with it in a few days anyway. And then there's TikTok, which I'm mentioning because Shane said, mention TikTok, and then we'll look really cool, and like we've got a finger on the pulse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, TikTok, uh, that's, not, that's not true. Um, no, it's true. Um, <laughs> tick, like, people do use TikTok, so I've heard. Um, <laughs> not me, because I don't really understand it, but I, I think it uh, works for some people. This is an account that I really like, though, which is um, a photographer who shows the different stages of like the behind the scenes of his photography. So he's kind of got this, like in this one, he's got this leaf thing on a ring and then he shows how he takes a picture through it and then he shows the end result. It's all like in a video and it's really fun. Um, mainly it looks to me like it's young guys like doing pranks, but you never know, have a play. Um, oh, I put down the clicker. Uh, and that's the end. So thank you all for staying. Yeah, do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. I, need to I can project. No, that's fine, actually. Well, I'll, maybe I'll stand close and you can just kind of shout into my microphone. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Quick, take a picture. Any questions at all before we worry about if there needs to be questions? Hello. Um, how much time when you started out being a blogger did you actually have to put into your social media so how much effort to start with versus now um to get you know you you, you become a brand yeah. and then how much now do you have to put in versus from the start that's a good question and um i guess to start with i did have to put in more a little bit more energy than i do now but i reckon even if you're starting out like the rules here would still apply like there's no point just churning out masses of content that isn't relatable and that doesn't have good images and that you know you don't need to be doing it every single day when you could be planning and scheduling it in advance yeah. so yes when you're starting out you probably want like more interactions and to get into more conversations and mm -hmm. to be kind of proactively finding people to follow. But that doesn't necessarily have to take up masses of time, I don't think. Um, and in terms of where you are now, if you wanted to keep on being a slave and push yourself, would, it, would you go further? Or you, does that make sense? Yeah, I think, like, ultimately I'm fairly lazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it's... Social media is one of those things like you could spend all day every day doing it and, you know, following people and going and commenting on other people's posts all the time and getting involved in pods and doing all kinds of things like you could do as much or as little um, as you want to. For me, being self-employed was always about wanting to work less. And so, like, I don't want to be spending loads of time doing it, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I... If I wanted to be doing it all the time, I would get a job in social media. Like, I want to do what I feel is, like, a good level to maintain yeah, definitely. decent engagement, but still be able to have brunch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the, the ratio, yeah. <laughs> cool. Everyone wants to go home now, Shane. Hi. Um, 
just wanted to see, because you, you mentioned a lot of the um, social medias there and you seem to bypass YouTube. I was wondering if that was a conscious decision um, for you not wanting to put yourself, I mean, you're, you're a beautiful lady. Um, you, Thank you, you very could much. Go on it, you know, no, no worries, I'm not on <laughs> Tinder though, sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, um, but it, it, you, you could certainly engage with the audience in a, in a slightly different way. So was that a conscious decision or, or not? Um, yes, it's conscious in that I really dislike video editing and find it really time consuming and I'm not very good at it. So um, I really like being in front of the camera. So I do quite a lot of work with brands where... I just rock up somewhere and say stuff and somebody else does all the hard work. Like, I'm totally fine doing that, but generally, like, putting together a video myself, I just find tedious and they always look so terrible at the end. So, yeah, I've, I guess I've chosen to concentrate my efforts on um, platforms where I feel a bit more competent. I've got... It's, not, it's less of a question and more of a... Uh, uh, an answer to the um, petrol thing. I actually, okay. I, I did actually, t I did actually put a reply. In, but I'm obviously not in one of those. See what, what no, no, no. I'm obviously not in the favourite column. Right? <laughs> um, so there's a hack on the petrol, right? Most petrol lids, you can squeeze underneath the trigger of the handle, so you just squeeze your petrol lid under the trigger and sit in the car, and the petrol just comes out. Simple. Um. <laughs> No, no, that, well, I, I mean, it's quite no, dangerous, to be honest. Uh, How does it stop? Will you just get back the, in the, the car? Petrol, the petrol will just stop automatically when the tank's... Ah, oh, yeah, but you still have to, like, pull up at the petrol station and get out. And once you're out, you might as well just stand there. Yeah, but that's when you're going to need Kenda's advice. Oh. You're going to need to... I, I pass the time by uh, reading everything that I can see with insight. Or sometimes I sing nursery rhymes to myself. I don't know. <laughs> More questions? Hi there. There's, uh, there's a lot of people out there doing social media and being influencers, etc. Um, you say you monetize by um, working with certain brands. Is that the only way that you've monetized? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much. Um, so a lot of people doing similar things to me do monetize a lot through affiliate links or um, like banner ads or click ads and that kind of thing. Um, but that's always kind of seemed like it would probably be too much hard work for me. Like, because if you've got an affiliate link, you've got to be promoting it all the time. And, um, yeah, so I, I tend to just stick with more of the, like, advertorial sponsored blog posts because that has the best return for me. But there are loads of different ways that people do. Like, there's a guy that I am chat to on Twitter a lot, and he, um, he basically does no work at all. He just has affiliate links for stuff. And then he goes to Disneyland and... Like, but he's massively into, like, he's really good at SEO and he's really good at promoting the affiliate links and that's not really my strengths. And, and how did you go from that journey, it's similar to the kind of question with this chap here, um, from effectively going from nothing um, and building yourself up to a point where people want to advertise through you? Well, I mean, partly luck really and that when I started blogging <laughs> in 2009 and not many other people were doing it not in the same way so it was easier to establish myself then and kind of build up a following and build a reputation when the, the marketplace was much less crowded um, I set my blog up because I was um, I just left a job and I wanted to go into journalism and so I set the blog up as like a marketing tool for that really and so then when brands did start to think about influencer marketing, I was just well positioned, I think, uh, to be able to exploit that. Cool. Thank you. Favourite brand of 2019? Um, I don't know. Like... Honestly, I just forget. Like, um, do you know what? I did this really good campaign with um, <laughs> what was the bank? What was the bank? Visa. Visa. Um, <laughs> with Visa. 
who were um, doing their like uh, high street shopping independence uh, campaign in the run up to Christmas. And now I don't know if you know, there's a little gift shop just over in the <laughs> sort of it's uh, but but ro rocket and bird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I I went in and uh, filmed a, a fun video with them that, that I then had to refilm completely because. We used Barbies, and that was like a brand, and Visa were like, oh, can't do brands. Uh, so they were really fun to work with. I don't know if you know them, but yeah, that was a nice campaign. Also, coming up in 2020, I've got Baby Joey, his first brand deal with a baby food company. So my one of my latest posts on Instagram will be Joey eating some baby food. So if you could all go and like that, because that's an ad. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be working with them all through the year as... Uh, Joey turns into a little boy. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Alison.